of the need to change my mind quite often, that I get my mind set on something, that this is the only way, and I can have a bit of hubris in being self-righteous, that I know this is the way to go. And it sometimes will take an act of God to break in and change my mind on things. I find that's in all these readings we're about to hear. As I keep telling you, this little season between Christmas and Lent is the epiphany season. And it focuses each Sunday on a calling, of being called. In and of itself, the readings don't seem to be very exciting. In the gospel, Jesus is going to call Peter, Andrew, James, and John, I believe, four more of his, who are going to become his friends, to join his committee. That's it. It's not a lot to preach on. I, I struggled with, what am I supposed to tell them that they're supposed to relate to in this? So let me focus on a couple things in this very short reading. One is, listen for the word immediately. And when you start thinking about it, it's quite extraordinary that these middle-class fishermen who have wives, families, and lives, all of a sudden, this guy, Jesus, who, spoiler alert, we know it's God on earth, but they don't necessarily yet. Maybe they've heard about him, I'm not sure. It doesn't give us a lot of information. It just says, he said, follow me, and immediately they did. They changed their whole lives off of this very minimal call of, come, follow me. I'll do, then we get the annoying translation. It used to be, follow me and you will become fishers of men. Now we're more inclusive and we're trying, we're still wordsmithing this one, I hope this isn't the one we're going to land on. Come follow me and you will catch people. <laughs> it, it's kind of like in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, the child catcher guy, it's kind of scary. I hope we're going to refine this one over the years, but come follow me and you will become fishers of men, that you will call them and immediately they will leave and change their lives. There is an, an extraordinary example of turning around or changing minds. And that immediacy is something I think we need to pay attention to when we're listening to this. I also, though, want to look at something super incredible in the Old Testament reading that could very easily just breeze by without you thinking about it. It's the story of Jonah, which is a super short book of the Bible. It's only like three pages long. So if you want to feel that you've done something virtuous and read a whole book of the Bible, go home and in about five minutes, you can read the, the book of jo uh, Jonah. And we hear this is the second time God has called him. And the first time you'll remember is in the belly of a whale. And Jonah is like a story of someone who has so much hubris and is so self-righteous and convinced that the law of God is the most important, that he is so into the law of God that he doesn't always listen to God. How often can we fall into this, where he thinks he is doing God's will, but God has to repeatedly call him to change his mind? He is self-righteous, he is full of hubris, he thinks he is perfect and everybody else is the problem. What is going to happen in this reading is you're going to hear God changed his mind. The extraordinary thing of that. God, if changed your mind is the word for repent. God repented. Wow, that is massive. In our Bible study, our lectionary study on Tuesdays, there's one kind of colorful character in our crowd. We get a good crowd, and I invite you to come. 
it's good fun. One colorful person said, I never pray. I don't want to change God's mind on anything. And I instantly kind of respected that, but also wondered, what are we doing? This is the key to our prayer. God changed his mind. God repented. He was going to do all this violent stuff out of temper tantrum, but he changed his mind when he saw what the people were doing. That is, even if Jonah's not going to change his mind, it's incredible that God does, that we have been given this gift in our prayers to be able to change God's mind, that God had a plan, but said, wherever two or three of you are gathered together, ask anything in my name, and I will change my mind, and I will do it. I'm still working that out of why sometimes the answer is yes and sometimes the answer is no. I don't have the answer any more than you do. But this very Hebrew understanding of God who, just to pause and explain, the Hebrew understanding of God is much more human. The Greek understanding of God is much more like Mount Olympus. God is up there knowing everything of how it's all going to happen, all-knowing, all-powerful, all-everything, that it's hard to relate sometimes to that all-perfection of God in the Greek mind. I much more prefer this Hebrew version, where he's down here on earth, he even makes mistakes sometimes. He's kind of a crazy old man and changes his mind and has temper tantrums sometimes, but then repents of it and fixes it, breaks things, but makes them better in being fixed. That I find much easier to relate to. And that's very much the God we're going to see in this reading from Jonah. So I would ask you to think about what it means to change your mind, to do a 180, to look the a different way than we were doing. Another thing that came up in the lectionary study was an objection that I keep referring, when I'm extending the invitation to guests, that I call us the island of misfit toys. And there was an objection that I don't feel weird or broken. Why are you putting me in this, this island of misfit toys? And I would have to say, we all need to repent of that. We need to change our minds. We are broken. We are imperfect. We have our temper tantrum. If you are a parent and you tell me that it was never an adventure, it was just always exactly the way I planned, I made no mistakes, I have perfect little children, there were no slamming of doors. There were no accusations that I was a bad parent. If you're telling me your Christianity is exactly the same, that no, I have it all in a neat, tidy box. God doesn't get upset with me. I have never done anything wrong. I am a perfect Christian. Then, yeah, maybe this isn't the place for you. This is a community of people who recognize we are imperfect, and we need God to come in and fix things. Because when God takes something that's cracked or broken or imperfect or has mistakes, and we, without the hubris and without the self-righteousness, say, we kind of need your help here. That's when God rushes in and fixes it better than it ever was before it was broken. That is our Christian faith. That is the place, the island of misfit toys, that we're inviting these guests to come to. I think it's an important step when we have visitors to say, we are not considering ourselves perfect and asking you to become perfect before you join us. We are acknowledging we can be messed up. We have our good sides and we have our bad sides, we are a work in progress, and if you can relate that you are a work in progress, that you have some 
items that may need a little bit of God's attention and handiwork, then join us. We all are standing before this throne of grace asking for help because we have this faith that it is going to come out even more marvelous than it was before. So metanoia, let us this morning turn around, change our minds. God is even going to change his mind. Who are we not to? Let us now listen as he speaks to us down the centuries through these ancient texts. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God.